record on this computer. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pagan Power. This is a definition of what power is within the pagan community and power in our lives. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to offer very some very simple decisions. Uh, we're going to move that over there. And that is going to be uh, the idea of what is the definitions of power. And we're going to set that. Yeah, if you want to lower your picture of that. And let me go ahead and say that the number one aspect of power, personal power for definition purpose, is it begins with the spark. The spark that brought you to life and began you breathing. All power, personal power, is based on one simple fact. You breathe. And that spark begins your journey to personal power. For the minute you stop breathing, you have less than 10 minutes to start breathing again or your personal power, whatever it is, ends. Now, the impact of your personal power may last longer than that. So understand all power starts as simply as breathing. And that begins the minute that you are sparked into life. So that is personal power to keep breathing. Without that, there is no further discussion. It's why so many practices focus on breathing. How you can breathe, how you take in air, how much we strive for it, how much we protect it. And it's the first of the real powers of paganism we talk about, and that is air. Clean air, the need and necessity of clean air. And so with that, we begin with that. So if you can breathe, then um, you can continue on with the process. The second thing that you, you must have in order to have personal power is that once you're born, you're born into earth. Nature, you can call it, but you're born into a body. And that body is essential to continuing to breathe. Without breath, it will not continue. And then you'll need to look for water, clean water, nutrients. So the next thing that your personal power requires is the ability to use your breath. And how do we, how do we use that? We cry, we yell, to so let them know that we need water. This could be mother's milk. It could be any number of things, but we need that essentially. Once we have both air and water and our earth, we need energy. What do I mean by energy? The nutrients in our food, the chemicals in our bodies, all allow us to actually physically move, and that's fire. When you bring them all together, that's who we identify as. So our personal power is about what we need to do in order to show we continue to breathe, continue to drink, continue to have a body, and continue to have energy within that body to do things. Anything beyond that is essentially a condition of the human things. There's other types of power in the universe. Let's talk about the power of electricity. It exists everywhere in, in great abundance. The spark at the beginning of the Big Bang that supposedly brought everything into existence. Power of the sun to you know, radiate energy. Without sun, we would not have power. So everything we do with energy and everything we do is about different levels of power. And unfortunately, the word power has gotten to be kind of a, how did I say it? A universal word, almost as useful as the word fuck. Uh, we use power for everything and describe everything. But power essentially is the ability to create a change in the environment or condition that exists. Simple. So in, when we talk about in pagan power, the, the essential personal power is your ability to breathe, air, the ability to obtain nutrients, water, to live in a body, earth, to have energy to move, fire, and that is the pinnacle is life. And you can say it has a soul, like it has energy, it has personality, you can say any number of things. But at that point, it becomes a point of view that you will never be able to get away from. Where is the center of an infinite universe? You. You're at the center of your own infinite universe. And everything that you see, everything that you hear, everything that you do from that point on is from that perspective. I know that's really hard for a lot of people to deal with. But that is where all personal power begins and continues.
And as you are growing, you're learning to make connections in your brain as it grows to be able to get what you need to continue. Not everybody has it. Not everybody has clean water in the world. Not everybody has clean air in the world. Not everybody has clean food in the world. Not clean earth or clean fire. I mean, all of these things are still power, but they're not necessarily power that we want. So we're always looking for ways to bring that in. And one of the th reasons I'm teaching this class is not because I am particularly selfless on this. I'm actually self-fullness on this. I mean, I want to do this for my own reasons, and some of them are selfish. And that is I want to be able to say that I identified what I believe to be power for my community. And in that community, I certainly uh, would love to have, you know, always love uh, have that idea of energy, of power, authority. So what is pagan power? Well, now we're going to go to another set of powers. So we know what internally what our power is, that that should continue to live. Everything outside of that is power of our circumstances, of our environment, of our universe. Our universe is filled with power, energy. Now, people want to say, oh, power is not energy. That is something else. And of course, they want to say power is political. But it, but it isn't. It is uh, is that. Um And there we go. And so I have my chat room open. So if you want to ask questions through the chat, I will open it up for more questions on that. So let us talk about the next step of power. You have personal power in the sense of what you can do and what you can act and what you can react to. And certainly you have to live in an environment that allows you for it. Uh, it doesn't have to be complex. I mean, the simplest and most content people in the world are the Para tribe down in South America. Only 800 of them left, and we see the problem of them, but they do have only 343 words in their daily language, and none of them are for, like, direction. None of them have a sense of time. They do not have tools that they leave back historical documents. They use biogradable things, and they leave almost no mark on the world, and they live a happy life for those who have met them because they like jokes. They like things, um, but they don't have a sense of time. They are born. They die. They they have a sense of now. And because of it, they're able to stay very happy and they're able to, to live a life that's very simple. Not a lot of us could live that life. Can you imagine not being able to think about tomorrow? Not even having the contextual language. So the first thing about power to understand in a pagan world is the power of words. That's right. The power of words, how we use language. And the fact is, is if we only have one language to speak, one censored language, that will limit our power in ways that it will not deal with it, that we will not um, understand it in a lot of ways. So if you don't understand a word, then it doesn't have any power to you. Now, it may have power to others, and but it may not have a power to you. So pagans fight for their language a lot. They fight for the definitions of the language. They want to know what Wicca stands for, and then they want to know the history of it. Then they want to know what heathenism is, and they want to know what it stands for, and they want to know what Druidism is and what it stands for. And at this point, when we get into pagan power, these identification of these words becomes essential to identity, to personal power. And if you're trying to learn these words, then you have to find people who are going to share them with you. And that's gate, That's where gatekeeping comes in. It's an essential part of all religious and personal power is the idea of what we keep for ourselves and what we keep for others. And knowledge is essential to power. But we're going to start with the beginning. Where does power begin? We've talked about life power that which is breathing and all that. But the real place of power, according to Alvin Toffler, one of the big futurists um, that I've studied in my life, is that all power comes from three things in the modern world. First, it's violence. You you can use violence to get what you want. You can take it from out, use it to, to take things away from other people. You can force them into uh, situations where they have to do things for you. You can threaten with power of violence. Violence is the essential power of the world, of humanity, and of nature. 
you have to use prey has you know pop predators have to use power on prey the physical act of actually taking it down and ultimately we have the one truly great power in violence and that is over life of, over death if you have power of life over death which we all do then we have a certain amount of violent power and how we leverage that power essentially talks about our survival today most governments act as complete control over violence they don't permit it they don't permit it in their citizens they don't permit it elsewhere and instead they create forces similar to police and regulators and all sorts of methods which say you will follow these rules and if you don't we have a right to use violence and what's that right of violence uh we can utilize violence to take people down and arrest them we can use violence to keep people isolated such as in prison we can use violence to keep them from doing all manner of shoplifting stealing theft burglary we go into these crimes we can also use this power to prevent people from entering certain types of businesses where you know if you open up a business without a business license they will use violence i.e governmental power uh, they try to hide behind it so violence is the essence of every single rule if you're not going to use violence then you have to find another path but violence is the crudest form of power simply crude but we use it constantly and the final essence of this power is war we see war all the time and i'm going to declare war on you i'm going to injure you and we see this inside the pagan community in witch wars now what is factoring is it actual real violence yes it's real violence but it's used from a different format the second element of power is simply called monetization or money or wealth or resources let us call it for resources for our definitions and resources make it possible to exchange make exchanges that allow for things to happen trade is used for it you can trade for violence i.e i can hire an army and make you do something so i don't have to use my personal violence but if i have suddenly a lot of bananas you know i'm out in the nature and i'm collecting bananas and nobody else said i can use violence to protect my violence i can hire other people well, i'll give you some of my bananas if you protect my bananas well i see that neighbor of mine has more bananas than i'd like them to i can send my violent soldiers who are now bought with money to go buy bananas and they can either use money to buy it or if they won't sell it to them violence so money is a great way to exchange things in peace but it also enhances your ability to use violence i.e the united states government has the largest uh uh defense spending in the world over 700 billion dollars and so the, so therefore we get to use our money both to buy and trade overseas but we also get to use it for violent purposes or you can just use money now, money is one of the hardest things in the pagan community. We have a terrible relationship with it. Um, there are very few of us in the community who actually use money well. And I'm, I'll tell you, I'm not a good money user in the sense of building wealth and things like that. I use money as a resource to do things that I want. And I make those exchanges with people for money. Now, the third part of there's exchange of there. The third part is knowledge. And knowledge is the singular most important aspect of power within the community. How do we use knowledge? Well, we first of all claim to have a sacred knowledge, something more. And where does that knowledge all begin from? Control of our breath. Air. Our understanding of water and of nutrients it's something our the use of our bodies yoga meditation the use of our bodies and how we do it cast it in ritual and the emotions within that body this is knowledge and how do we also then use it the energy we use it to develop our energy we learn how what foods to eat what energies to drink and what healing practices 
work for best for us. And this is true of everybody because we are now pursuing knowledge. Knowledge is the most singular, most important form of power. Because if you have knowledge, you can exchange knowledge for money or resources. I have the knowledge to make arrowheads. And now I can sell those arrowheads to others. And those people who are using the arrowheads, they can use them for violence, either to hunt or to war. But knowledge can make those arrowheads better. And the person who has the best arrowheads will often get the best prey, get the best food, get the best you know, land. And so we see that battle of, of, of it happening. And so that is it. So we, we get down to violence. Knowledge is the third one. And monetary money is the exchange between those two. So what is power in the pagan community? Well, it's knowledge, right? And knowledge is uh, not pagan community, pagan community. I was just watching. Sometimes things have uh, very interesting aspects to the word. And so the way we use words is a way to move energy. And our knowledge of the universe allows us to move energy through our systems. Electricity is treated as a fairly modern ideology. You know, we're looking at two, three hundred years of its existence, and it's now its increased existence. And I often call computerized sciences intelligent electricity. That's right. It's electricity that carries some information with it, knowledge. So we have that aspect of it. And what we can do is we can communicate our ideas and our words. And in our minds, they make sense. And what is the last power of the pagan community's knowledge? What is our knowledge gain and monetization gain and our, our, and, and our limited use of violence? Um, a physical violence. We use a, a terrifically more important violence, which I am going to explain here in a few minutes. And that is attention. We want our words to gather attention to get people to agree with us so that we can then get us all using resources in the same direction. And oftentimes we try to do it through a system called silos, i.e. we are often using hierarchical systems, i.e. Grand Poobah, as people will talk about, or a high priestess. And either they've gained it through respect, which is emotional knowledge of an individual that you've come to understand how they use their power, and or through harsher methods, such as a cult. They brainwash you. They change the way that your brain works. But all of that is how they will get you to use your personal power on the half, and that's called attention. That's right. Attention. So attention is now the number one aspect to our modern society, to pagan society. How do we get attention? Because when we get attention, we can use our words to provide things. Our knowledge allows us to do things for you. And our knowledge makes our violence better but it also has another aspect to it there is a more peaceful aspect to violence and that is called labor ultimately labor or brute force is one of the other things we can exchange for money and knowledge i.e we can be an apprentice to a witch and learn all sorts of things from them or we can utilize it to you know get money or whatever so if you're not going to use it in forms of violence i.e using physical energy to use for violence then you can use it for labor you can dig a ditch i'm actually stripping paint to earn money in order to continue my processes so i've been doing two to three days a week i've been stripping paint for like six hours a day my labor is is being used with somebody else's knowledge i.e the rehabber to provide me with income because they want to make something great. They want to fix up an apartment and make it even better. They want to increase user knowledge, make it even better by cleaning it up so that to the eye, 
to the people who are paying attention, love it enough that they want to rent it or buy it. So this is a very intricate dance that we do all the time. And so within that sensibility, where is pagan power? Well, pagan power exists wherever our attention is. Where is our attention as a community and as individuals? And what that creates a lot of times is the ability to try to control knowledge. How we use our knowledge is what makes our community so powerful and so useful and so unique. Unlike a lot of the power structures currently in the world, and there are a lot of them, pagan authority is trying to seek to make us feel past our traumas, to live a higher life, to feel better. Our goals are not necessarily to be rich or to have armies or to have anything. We're trying to live a happy life. Why? Because we believe that if we have a happier life, that we will be able to have a better understanding of the world and understanding of the cosmos and understanding of the gods and, uh, and such, that if we can have that better life by having these understandings, our quality of life condition can improve. That's right. Why do we pursue any form of power? To improve our quality of life. And sometimes in our minds, that isn't for us personally, but for us collectively, such as your family. A mother and father wants a quality of life for their children. So too, the gods, we believe, want us to have a better quality of life. In paganism, this form of power originates either in the collective, i.e. a group or a coven or a circle or whatever, that we work together, such as Pagan Pride Days, to kind of have this day. Or the other form, and we've recently seen it, is formed through hierarchical methods where we are concerned with who is the biggest priest, who is the highest and most powerful high priestess, who is in control of status. And that is a very ancient way of being. We've always done that. We've always had the tribe and chieftain. And believe it or not, at one time, we did not have quite the same names that we do today. In fact, a lot of our names was based on what we did. That's why we have a lot of Smiths. Uh, even in the ancient time, if you were a king, you were born the king, and you became the king. And you didn't have a choice. And you didn't have a, a way of getting around it because that's what it was. Our brains, while we were extremely intelligent, weren't as flexible in our imaginations. But at one point in history, we were. So let me go where did power originate in the form of a modern society. And this is where pagans lead. We must get better at it. It looks like about seventy to 80,000 years. You all know uh, – talked about the idea of the imagination coming in and the ability to share a story that created a paradigm to live by. Such as your tribe, it could have been Neanderthal, it could have been Zedvosian. We have now know there are a number of different humans, including sapiens, and that we could look at a statue and we say, oh, that's our god. And the guy at the tribe next door says, Oh, we have that God too. We must be cousins. We must be in some way together. And that allowed us to go from strangers into becoming allies and eventually family. So our storytelling allows us to be able to generate the energy and the ideas that we are open to. So what is at the core of pagan power? Well, it's storytelling. All humanity is about storytelling. Once we get past the personal power of air and water in our bodies, with our energy, living our lives, everything else becomes a personal story that we tell to the world and the world tells to us. 
a mother and a father in those first couple of years is giving you the information to live in that society peacefully or not peacefully and they're doing it with any number of tools uh they will use food as bribery form of monetization they will use violence yelling screaming patting the person on the bottom to get them to change their behavior they don't like and they will also then use knowledge their superior knowledge to give you knowledge of what they're doing uh, it's very difficult for us to realize that which makes us modern really comes out of knowledge being reinforced over and over again. Many children are born pagan because their parents are pagan, just like many children are born Christian because their children are born Christian or Muslim or Hindu. We don't get to choose unless you have believe in some metaphysical abstract. We don't get to choose where we're born and what culture we're in. But that thing that we call free will, that little bit of energy that we have, that spark that builds our mind, that builds our energy, does give us the ability to begin to change our environment to allow us to live in a certain way. And we can break free of it. And a lot of pagans are breaking free of a christian culture that we live in or christianized culture i should say we're not in a christian culture we're christianized meaning most of our words most of our aspects are from that so now i'm going to give you what i think is a very important part so i myself believe that the central part of paganism and the ability to grow is in the naming of items it's the one power that was put into the Bible given to Adam, that Adam could name everything, and that if he could name everything, then he could understand it eventually. And that was a premise that is out there. Now, regardless of, of it being just a Christian idea, I think it is an idea of what our intelligence does. We can name things. Uh, money is the greatest story ever told. We named money, and we name it. We change what it is all the time. But we but don't change the idea of it, and that is it's scarce, and you want as much of it as you can if you want to build things, if you want to do things, if you want to be things. You want to exchange resources for labor, resources for items. We want to get monetaries to make sure that we're secure. We pay taxes to make sure the violence isn't used on us. We use all sorts of money in different ways, and it has all sorts of different stories. It's scarce. It's abundant. It's useful. It's not useful. It's bad. It's corrupt. It's the most important thing in the world. We have all of these stories that roll around, and in the pagan world, we're not very good with them. In fact, one of the richest people in our community is uh, an individual by the name of Christian Day, and he's one of the few people that use monetization in a pagan context to sell readings, uh, you know, readings, uh, books, materials, magical stuff to a mundane audience who are having a good time at vacations, both in Chicago, uh, both in uh, Salem, and that uh, um, Las, uh, not Las Vegas, uh, maybe someday, but no, um, New Orleans. And he utilizes his ability to persuade, to storytell, and everything else. And I asked him one time, why was he successful? And according to him, he says, he said it this very simply. If they're not feeding me or fucking me, what do they matter? So he's very directed, focused on earning money from the knowledge he has in Salem. And today he's making a huge amount of money off informational. Uh, he's doing the um, uh, WitchCon, which is like the biggest online pieces. So he's got a thing called momentum. He's using his knowledge and his use of knowledge, and he's gathering attention, and he constantly grows his monetary system by getting better and better information on his targets, the mundane audiences that are in his cities and he uses that momentum and his advanced knowledge of income to constantly make sure that there's monetization 
and he makes other people money too. Let me be honest. He made he makes money to other people. He's one of the highest that. So we can see people in the community make money. I've seen other readers. Readers are the number one way we make it. So we exchange our ability, our psychic ability, our ability to read for often for cash. For me personally, power for me was to attend the Parliament of World Religions and to go from being a very young man who heard. 30 years old heard how power is gained there and at 60 years old i was able to see my tradition which had been working on 30 years standing on the platform of the opening scenario now one thing about power uh people don't realize is i tend to use it for other people i tend to want to see more people i actually want to see pagan power expand and it does so one of the things I do is go out and I teach people to find what they want and then use their North Star, their energy and the focus to become the leadership that they want. This was able to allow me to help people all over the world and, lar and create the largest Wiccan tradition in the world on behalf of the Corellian tradition. And so as we see that, and what did I do? I said, what do you want? We want knowledge. Will you pay me a small amount of money for it? Yes. Will you provide your labor to it? Yes. Will you you know, pursue it for your own purposes? Yes. Will you want to help others pursue it for their purposes? Yes. And so on and so forth. Till today, we have trained over 5,000 clergy members that are recognized and many more who are out there. We've provided education to over 300,000 people, and we utilize it by using the energy of the internet, which was knowledge, that we bought with small amounts of money. The good news of our age is that computerization is different from capital. I could never have built Witch School physically. We tried. We lost. Uh, but on the energy level, we were able to create Witch School and a radio station, and a television station, and communication of all kinds. And that is because we have the knowledge of a message, the Corellian message. It could be anything. And for me, it was uh, crystal energy, everything else. Taught it to people who then found value in it, who gave us a small amount of money so that we could spread it further, and that they were able to not only love it what they were able to work in it i mean one of the biggest things i ever did was get uh the correct for for me was is get stephanie neal uh who was a uh, first elder at the time in 2015 to the main stage of the parliament procession not actually on the stage that would happen in 2023 but actually in the procession and she was actually filmed and she was put on news. But the action before it started with Lady Alyssa um, and Lady Elizabeth. And they were asking me, could they wear their robes at the procession? And I said, that certainly you could. I mean, you can wear your robes at any time that you could show your personal power through your robes of your faith. And then they took it to Reverend Don and Reverend Stephanie. And everybody agreed to dress up in their robes, except me. I set myself out as wearing my, my uniform, which is a black suit. And they basically went there. And not only did they gather attention and some authority and some power with it, because everybody wanted to take a film with it. And they did so well, they asked the tradition to put one person into the procession. Everybody looked at Lord Don. But this parliament was for for the women, the earth, and we're having them recognized. And he named then first elder Stephanie Neal into that position. And I stood with her the whole time until she started to move because she was so nervous. She was so surprised at what was happening. And yet she went with it because she was willing to accept that personal power, and she walked it. And out of that parliament, she would become the first priestess of the Corellian tradition. 
So that is a way of power. How do they do it? They have the money for the robes. They have the knowledge in the robes. They had the attention of everybody, and then they secured that, and then they were given a position to walk in the procession to show their equality to others. They got the story to include them. That's really where personal power comes from in the pagan community. So where do we go from here? In order to have power, you have to have the ability to share knowledge, share resources, and to find a way to use them to gather more power, more energy, more resources. A good example of this would be if you want to live off the grid, which is a form of power to protect yourself, but you want some of the niceties of society – you have to figure out how to generate electricity. And we do that now with solar panels. We can buy things from the marketplace that allows us to live separately. But of course, we need to own our land. So you need to figure out ways to buy land. Lots of ways of doing that. And once you get the land, to fix it up. These are all different ways to do so. How most people enter into the marketplace is that they start a soap business, a jewelry business, a incense business, and they sell what we need to the community. So in order for us to have monetary success so we can buy land, so we can buy other items, we need to find a way to sell our ideas, our products into the system. So the number one problem we have, the number one problem we have in our community is that we are not serving each other, nor are we serving the marketplace very much. We are basically looking for ways to control our own personal energy, our own personal power through having attention on ourselves and, and allow that to grow so that we're more in authority. Today, I have a great deal of influence, a great deal of power in that ability to influence, but I have very little authority because I've recently given it up. So I have, to, I have to share my ability to gain power through influence. Pagans are influencers. We have a lot of different types of power. So what is power? Power is essentially the ability to make a change in the environment. In, and that change starts with you breathing, starts with your way you put your thoughts together, how you use your physical body, either for violence or for labor, how do you learn how do you learn your knowledge? Do you buy it? Do you share it? Do you find it? Do you discover it? And then we utilize that to do things for others so that we can exchange other aspects of our lives. We can change. If I make tools, I can exchange it for food if the other person needs it. So in pagans, the number one thing we know about and we help people with is how to get over trauma, how to beat back the energies that have kept them limited in their lives, to have them see themselves as unlimited beings who can do almost anything. My life is all about that. I've done things that people have not thought I was capable of. I've got, I've met presidents and I've met the poorest people on the planet. I have exchanged conversations with so many people because I have a story to tell. I'm an adventurer who loves life. And my life has been about teaching people how to live a better life as I see it. Now, maybe I'm right and maybe I'm wrong. And some people have lived, lived better because of me and some have had a worse life because of me. But at the end of the day, I think that what I'm doing is correct. 
I believe in myself. I am my knowledge I know is secure. So I have personal power. And my outside influence power is by the number of people who pay attention to me. And then I share that. The number one aspect of pagan power to me early on was to do interviews, to do radio, to do magazines, to communicate. Not the message. I shared everybody's message and still do. But to make that message possible. So for me, it was building platforms. And then interviewing over 500 people easily and doing thousands of interviews and asking questions. And because I do that, people think that what I have might be interesting. And I hope that they do. And that they want to share in my audience. And that gives me power to go to almost anybody in the pagan world and ask them to come on my shows. And from that, I was able to build a school, a radio station, and so many other aspects. And I learned another thing that I was able to use my reference knowledge that the internet, that my visions of the future would require us to have less cash and capital to simulate things within a world that exists today. And that's about to explode. My next class, I am going to talk about why we need power, about what's coming down and why it is. But let's understand what power is. Power is your ability to manipulate and to use energy in either forms of personal energy and also in the forms of violence and labor, monetization and resources, however you get them. And then finally, knowledge. And knowledge is the most useful and powerful of it. And it's also the most fungible. So we can share that over and over again to do so. And so with that, this is the first part of pagan power, as I see it. I will open up. I am now opening up everything to allow for uh, questions. And if you have any questions, feel free uh, to unmute yourself and do so again. If you want to ask questions publicly, now is the time to do so. Um, I'm more than happy to have that. Uh, in a few minutes, I will be shutting this off, and only those people who are attending the class will be able to ask more private questions. But do you have any public questions out there? Okay. So... The question is, I don't feel like I have any power. That's a usual feeling. That's not an uncommon feeling. And why does that come? It's because you cannot act in a way to change your environment in a way that you'd like. You feel like you are owed something more than what you've done, and you are also not done enough to gain it it's not true but it is definitely an energy so as long as you can breathe as long as you can have nutrients you need to have a certain amount of power to get food and so whoever is controlling those methods you have to find a way to go around them but your personal power is how you feel inside how do you stay happy how do you stay energetic how do you stay there because anything else will happen, and that too shall pass. So remember, why do you want power? Next week, we will tell you more on that. But this week, that's what power is. It's simple, isn't it? And it's also difficult to, to enact, because you have to do something to act on it. And with that, blessings all. I'm, I'm hoping that you enjoyed this. And see you next week for the Why of Power.